the African Union, which had previously taken a rather um, strong stance against what the AU calls unconstitutional changes of government, in more recent years, the AU has come across as lacking the skin and the spine to actually take action. Because in the past, uh, ECOWAS in West Africa working with the AU have shown that those who engage in unconstitutional changes of government can face severe consequences, including direct military intervention by ECOWAS, uh, supported by the African Union. So, so the coup contagion that has been happening, I think is in part because there hasn't been resolute and, 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 and decisive action undertaken by the African Union and by regional um, economic communities like ECOWAS uh, in, in, in West Africa. A lot of people have said that uh, at the end of the day, these are just clubs of people who protect each other. Uh, they don't have the, two, uh, the teeth are to bite. Uh, it's only talk, 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 but they can't walk mm. the, the talk. The OAU, the predecessor organization to the African Union, was for the most part a, a clubbing of autocrats. And the OAU was completely spineless and um, incapable of doing anything. For example, one of the things that the African Union has been doing, for which it deserves credit, is that every time there is a coup, every time there is a, an unconstitutional change of government using force, uh, the African Union promptly suspends that country from its membership. Uh, the AU has been inconsistent. I think that's where the issue is. Uh, there have been cases of uh, overt military takeovers that the AU has danced around and you know said, oh, maybe this wasn't a coup. It happened in Zimbabwe, actually, when Mugabe was, was overthrown. Earlier on, in, in Egypt, uh, uh, oh. ICC had overthrown Mohamed Morsi. And again, the African Union really, you know, other than, you know, say that they were suspending, the, 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 uh, suspending Egypt and so on and so forth, not much action has been undertaken uh, in, in those cases. Moses, I respect uh, uh, your perspective on that, uh, but uh, for sure I will not just sit back and not take you on. There are people who say that, uh, for example, uh, you have countries, I can name some, you have the likes of Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, Congo, Brazzaville, uh, most recently, uh, Central African Republic, where these leaders have changed constitutions, right? They have circumvented their constitutions. How do you respond to that kind of criticism where, in light of these uh, coups that are happening in the, the Sahel or West Africa, uh, when you look at what these leaders, smart leaders, have done previously by changing constitutions to stay a little bit longer, amounts to a coup d'etat. I, this... I agree, I agree, Paul, 100%. My only pushback is that, well, of course we can agree that the AU is at fault. You know, as I said, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's lacked the spine. It's not shown that it can be consistent in taking action. But don't forget that the AU is a member organization. Its strength, its impact is as good as the membership. So the African Union is hamstrung by the fact that its actions are based on its membership. And it's the same members that are engaged in wrongdoing, so they cannot punish themselves.